I call the Honourable Member Jacinda Ardern. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. It's my pleasure to take the first call from Labour on um, the Sentencing Protection of Children from Criminal Offending Amendment Bill brought by the New Zealand First uh, Member and to say that Labour is supporting this bill to select committee so it can be given further um, consideration both by the public and by members of this House. But we do have some reservations and uh, I want to share those and outline those with the House now. You know, we absolutely agree um, with, with the member that it is incumbent upon us to protect the most vulnerable from harm. Uh, our argument would be what is the best point of intervention to try and ensure that those layers of protection exist? Uh, how do we best ensure that a child is kept distant from harm? How, when they're found to be in harm's way, you can best ensure that they are supported and removed from that harm? And our question is, is adding an extra bit of criteria for when a, uh, an offender comes to be sentenced the best way to do that? Keeping in mind that probably most judges would keep in mind or factor in the presence of children when they come to sentence as it is. But what we're relying upon for this bill to take effect is first for a criminal to be charged, for enough evidence to exist for them to be charged, second for them to be convicted, and third then for the sentencing to take place. Now I want to use the example that the member has used around the presence of children in uh, methamphetamine labs, because it's a very good example. The member is right to raise. There are a number of vulnerable children in this country who are currently exposed to the dangers of methamphetamine manufacture. In 2010 alone, 44 children were found living in laboratories, physically living in the environment in which equipment and uh, drugs were manufactured, potentially explosive environment, not to mention the fact that they were absorbing that, uh, uh, that, those toxins into their skin. But that's just, that was in just one year. We have, it's a growing trend. We've had roughly 200, and that's down to police records, Mr Chair. Police records have demonstrated the presence of almost 200 children since they started measuring that. Now, the issue is, Mr uh, Speaker, you would assume that the police and, for instance, who then report to child, youth and family, when they go into a home with these methamphetamine, they will tell SIFS, there is a child in the home of where we have done a drug raid. Now, we would assume, as fair-minded New Zealanders, that any parent raising their child in that kind of risk environment would have their child removed. A fair assessment, a fair judgment to make. That is not the case. In some cases, we have parents who are being charged, convicted and sentenced and their other spouse is still caring for the child and they go back into the home with that child. They may, sometimes they even return to manufacturing methamphetamine. The police have found this to be the case. Now, why is that? Well, simply because the threshold for what is abuse and neglect implies that you are removing the necessities of life from a child. And there is, in the minds of SIFs at least, a threshold that isn't met through drug manufacturing. There isn't apparently enough evidence to demonstrate that that's the removal of the necessities of life. Well, when you, in my mind, when you find toxins equivalent to that of a methamphetamine user in the hair follicles of a child, that is enough. That should be enough. Simply the fact that you consider it acceptable to raise your child in that environment, that should be enough. So, Mr Chair, the point that we want to make is this. If we really want to protect children, should we be considering the fact that it should be a separate offence in itself rather than an aggravating factor? Should we be considering that at least our Child Protection Agency considers it neglect and abuse for those children to be in that? And why don't we do that first? Because that is what we know we're crying out for now. Any child that is put back into the home where this is occurring says to me, there is a hole that exists and if we are waiting till someone is convicted, that doesn't fix the hole. So we've got to look at some of those other issues. But as I've said, Mr Speaker, we support this bill to select committee so we can debate some of these issues. As I say, some of our reservations are whether or not it's directed in the right place and whether or not judges already have this power. But that's something we look forward to considering. And I thank the member for bringing this debate to the House. Very good speech. I call the Honourable Member Ian McKelvey.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I too want to uh, congratulate. Uh,